All right, you guys, today we're gonna check out how to make this tech design here in After Effects. So first I made these visuals here in Illustrator in Vectors, and I'm gonna save these as a JPEG and import the image in After Effects. Let's go to After Effects, click on New Composition. I gotta go with 1080p, four seconds, black background, click OK. And here I'm gonna drag and drop the image that I just did in Illustrator, press the letter S to scale it up, make it fit, there you go. And I'm gonna go to the opacity and scale it down. So it's gonna be transparent. Now first I'm gonna make this warp effect. So I'm gonna select a region of interest and I'm gonna select this area right here. And we're gonna go to composition and select crop comp to region of interest. And I can delete the image. Now let's go and right click here, click on new, select solid, type in grid, click OK. Let's go to the effects and presets, type in grid. Let's go and drag and drop the grid on the solid. And from here, we're gonna go to the size from and change it to width and height sliders. Here you can increase the width. I'm gonna go a little bit more bigger and also the height. There you go. And here with the anchor, you can position the grid however you want. And I'm gonna go and animate the anchor. And I'm gonna bring it all the way to the end, somewhere here. And I gotta go to the left number of the anchor and just bring it and this is going to start animating it. So if I bring it back, you can see it is animating nicely. I also gonna press the letter U to highlight the keyframes. I'm gonna bring the keyframe all the way out. Let's go to the effects and presets again, type in warp. And here we got the mesh warp, drag and drop under the grids. And we're gonna need to decrease the row and column. I gotta go with three by row. And I also gonna decrease the column. I gotta try it out with five by column. So at least this way it's gonna be visible here. And I gotta bring it back here to the beginning. And I gotta go and activate the distortion mesh stopwatch. I gotta go somewhere at the 10 frames per second. And I gotta go and start distorting these. And I'm gonna select, and this way you can distort these rectangles. And it's gonna look something like this. I'm gonna select the grid, press the letter U, press the letter U again. And I'm gonna select the center point, press Ctrl C. I'm gonna go to the 20th frame. And I'm gonna select the first keyframe, press Ctrl C. And let's go at the end, press Ctrl V. So it's gonna loop. I also gonna select all these keyframes and right click on the keyframe. Keyframe says select easy ease. And now I'm gonna push this keyframe all the way out. So this way it's gonna start distorting, animating, and it's gonna go back to normal and it's looping as well. So now that we have this really cool looping animation, we're gonna go and create the full composition. So let's go back to the project. I gotta go here, create a new composition. This is gonna be final comp. Let's go with 1080p. Four seconds, black background, click OK. And again, I'm gonna drag and drop the image, the reference image, and decrease the opacity again. And I'm also gonna lock the layer. And now we can go ahead and drag and drop the comp one in here with the wireframes. I'm also gonna rename it as wireframes. And I'm gonna place it right here. Now I'm gonna select the type tool, type in here Panther. By the way, I went with the Akira expanded font. I'm gonna place it where it was, press the letter S, scale it up. And now we're gonna animate these lines here. Let's go ahead and click somewhere here. Now select the pen tool and I'm gonna create a line like this. Now also make sure that you don't have anything on the fill. Click on the fill, click on the none, click OK. Click on the stroke. Let's activate the stroke with the solid color. Click OK. And here you can increase the stroke thickness, but I'm gonna go down to 26, for example. And now we're gonna go to the shape layer with the lines. I'm gonna rename it as lines. Let's open it up. Let's go to add, select repeater. Open up the repeater one. Here we got the copies. We're gonna increase it later. Let's go to transform repeater one. And here we got the position. So this is the position. I gotta decrease this to zero because we don't need it. And we're gonna go and increase the second position. So it's gonna go downwards like this. And now we can also increase the copies. I gotta go somewhere around 50-ish. And we're gonna go back to the position and adjust the position as accurate as possible. I'm gonna put it a little bit more up, press the letter P for position, activate the stopwatch, and I'm gonna put it somewhere at the end, and I'm gonna go to the position, and here you can increase it. Right now I won't loop it, and it should look something like this. I'm gonna bring the keyframe all the way out, and now I'm gonna uncheck the lines so I can see the rectangle. I'm gonna go and select the rectangle again, make sure to unclick here, and I'm gonna go and create a rectangle like this. I'm also gonna switch it back to fill, Let's select the fill, click OK, uncheck the stroke, 
click on none, click OK. I'm also going to activate the lines. Make sure to have here the track mat pick whip. If you don't have it, you can go to toggle switch and switch it over and drag the pick whip on the shape layer. So it's going to corrupt it. It looks something like this. And now, but least, let's animate this typo here. I'm going to select the type tool and I'm going to go with Noya Haas Grotesque and I'm going to change it to a bold. Press the letter R for rotate, rotate 90 degree angles. Position it here, press the letter S for scale, scale it up. I'm also going to make a rectangle to complete it. I'm going to go to the text, open it up, and let's go to animate, select character offset. Let's bring this back all the way. All right, I'm going to press and hold control and click on the character offset stopwatch. And I'm going to type in wiggle and I'm going to go with 215. Let's close it. Click somewhere here and it's going to wiggle like this right now. But we're going to go to the range selection one, open it up and we got here the start and the end. And I'm going to animate the start, bring it back, activate the stopwatch and bring it to the middle. I'm going to go to the second second and increase it to 100%. And I'm going to select the first keyframe, press control C and bring it to the end, control V, bring it all the way out. And this way it starts unclear and it starts clarifying and it goes back. And pretty much this is how you make this tech design here in After Effects. Thanks for watching.